this whole thing, the Snowden affair, or however you want to call it, the mass surveillance scandal, is here to stay. This inquiry committee is going to last for another three years. And um, I think it already has shown that there is a system of mass surveillance in place. And this system is not just a system of the Five Eyes, it's uh, other countries being involved. It's also about the German uh, BND being involved in this system. Uh, mass surveillance is hurting business as much as it hurts the rights of um, the, uh, the civil rights of uh, citizens. And um, so I think we have to talk. I think it's very important that what you just said gets heard in the United States, but it's equally important that what gets discussed in the United States gets heard here. Because there is a convergence of discussion in the United States and in Europe and in Germany in particular about this concern, about the reach of government, about the balance of, uh, of how you really get to an equation between the bottomless possibility to connect and the need to protect. <laughs> it is not, do we need each other? It's how we need each other. I think that assumption has now become pretty clear through the last two or three hours. It's not whether we need each other, it's how we need each other. And in this particular case, when we are both grappling with the same technological challenges, uh, we can't afford a lot of mudslinging to make ourselves feel better. I absolutely agree with that too. We need each other, we need each other an incredible amount, and particularly in this area of cyberspace. Germany and the US have very similar visions about the importance of this technology, the importance of the internet, the importance of cyberspace, the need for it to be open, interoperable, secure and reliable all together, that you can have all of those things and we need to work out how we have all of those things. But you know, other countries and more repressive regimes don't share that vision. Other countries look at uh, surveillance as a way to uh, go after their citizens, for, to make sure they don't, uh, they don't uh, uh, dissent from the government or they do it on religious basis. Now, the question you ask is, do we take uh, this seriously? Do we take the issue seriously and do we take Germany seriously? Again, not surprisingly, I'm going to say absolutely. Uh, you know, first, if you look at what's happened in the U.S. in terms of the debate just in the U.S., what the president has ordered in terms of the, the various reviews he's ordered, the speech he gave in January, the follow-up from that, uh, the structured dialogue where we had the, uh, the president's chief of staff come over here and meet with his counterpart and create a structured di uh, dialogue, and then the cyber dialogue, which was more uh, focused on some of the positive aspects and challenges, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, we absolutely take Germany seriously. The one thing I would, I would highlight is uh, the statements by the president that it's not just about American privacy, it's also about uh, the privacy of people, uh, in, uh, you know, of, of, uh, people in other countries. Okay, so we're really just talking about, I think, the struggle that we both have on both sides of the Atlantic and, quite frankly, elsewhere, about this innovation, this technological revolution, and its purpose and its proportionality, and trying to get policy wrapped around that. I think, yes, it's good that we have this cyber dialogue, a lot of contacts uh, between uh, governments, members, and so on. But I think it's now really disappointing that nothing happened since the last year after uh, Snowden leaks uh, information. We have mass surveillance, ongoing mass surveillance, in the United States, also in the European member states, yes, sure, also in uh, Germany, perhaps many of them are violating uh, our uh, laws, our constitution. The former president of our constitutional court, Mr. Papier, just uh, stated that this practice, this mass surveillance is violating our constitution. So. There have to be more, more than only a dialogue and try to understand. There is such a different understanding of privacy in the uh, United States and in Europe and in Germany. So I think we need more from both sides. But one element in this discussion, I think, is this right to be forgotten. Uh, it's laid down in um, ruling of the European Court, May uh, this year, 
And I think it's more than only one ruling, one besides other rulings. It's a crucial ruling because the right to privacy play, plays now an important role to find the right balance um, between threats and chances regarding the digital era, the digital revolution. I think the, the, the discussion at the moment has gone a bit the wrong way because people um, are thinking that this right to be forgotten includes cases where you had extensive press coverage on a, a criminal case, for example, a year ago, mm -hmm. and you can now ask the search engine providers to actually eliminate links to these press articles. And I think that's just, that, that is wrong. That would be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think that it is helpful to actually have guidance from the government or for, you know, legislation um, to, to explain exactly where the, the borders mm -hmm. should be. I think it, it's, it wouldn't be good if that was left entirely to the companies, to the search engine providers. And when we talk about various uh, privacy legislation, we, we may have different frameworks, but the, and we even have a consumer bill of rights that, that uh, we have uh, put out, that the administration has put out, and we're trying to, uh, you know, we, we're still dedicated to getting that uh, put together. And we actually enforce a lot of privacy uh, violations, our Federal Trade Commission does. The key thing there is making sure they're interoperable between the two of us. And I know this is something you heard when you were in office, making sure that we're not disadvantaging either of our, our countries, that we're protecting privacy and making them interoperable. We are not living in the post-privacy era. I think really it is a problem that secret services, as NSA, have complete access to data collection of private companies. And you you just said you didn't know nothing, nothing about that. I here, as former Minister of Justice, had a um, round table with representatives of Microsoft, Facebook, and so on, after the uh, information uh, of Edward Snowden, and they all told us, no, we know nothing about this. That the NSA, perhaps also other uh, authorities, have <laughs> fully success to all these private data collection. You know, the fact is that every country around the world does do surveillance for purposes of protecting its citizens. It's, it's far it's predates the internet, and this is, a, you know, we have to make sure that this is governed by those four principles I talked about. Now, absolutely, definitely, uh, you know, desperately we need each other, and we need to make sure that that debate goes forward and we are able to promote our shared values.